to the class of microwave course so today we are going to discuss about the microwave propagation so in this class we will discuss about the topics like antenna radiation pattern the microwave propagation and the microwave antenna infrastructure so let's start with first that is the antenna radiation pattern so here this diagram shows the antenna's radiation pattern so this uh, it shows the graphical representation of a radiation properties of antenna as a function of space coordinate so most cases radiation pattern determines in the far field region and it represented as a function of directional coordinate so here it shows the main beam side beam minor lobes back lobes so these are the part of the antenna's radiation pattern so the peak of the main beam represent the highest level of field strength and it is approximately 70 percent of the radiated energy enclosed so it means it enclosed the 70 percent of the radiated energy in the main lobe and the side lobes represent a uh, the source of interference into the communication link and uh, this is the reason that it is generally required to be of low level it means the side lobe must be of the low level because it uh, it add it act as the interference uh, source of interference in the communication part so the main lobes consist of the main power and the side lobes and some power is also radiated in the off direction that is in the backward direction of the antenna so these side lobes are the intrinsic property of antenna radiation and cannot be completely eliminated and these side lobes are only eliminated and uh, by uh, designing a proper uh, by designing a um, antenna that do not have any defect so side lobes are also due to the antenna defects that can be minimized with the proper design so this is about the antenna radiation pattern the next we are going to discuss about the next part that is the antenna radiation pattern the type of antenna's radiation pattern so there are three type of antenna radiation pattern that is isotropic radiation omnidirectional radiation and the directional radiation so the isotropic radiation are the radiation that are equal radiations in all direction I mean it means it emits the equal radiations in all over the direction so it is represented by a sphere whose center coincides with the location of the isotropic radiation the next part is omnidirectional radiation so omnidirectional radiation are the antennas which radiate much more effectively in some direction than the other so the term is applied to antennas whose directivity is much higher than that of half wavelength dipole and the directional radiation directional radiation is an antenna which has a non-directional pattern in given plane it means it only emit the radiation in a particular direction on the, on which it is facing so this is the directional radiation so these are the three type of antenna radiation pattern the next we are going to discuss about the microwave propagation so first of all we will discuss about the curves of interference in the microwave propagation or the transmission of the microwave signal so the first one is the weather conditions such as rain hail snow fog so these will affect the radiation uh, sorry uh, transmission of the microwave signal and it extremely uh, extremely high temperature will also affect the transmission of the microwave strong dangerous high winds exposure to lightning strike and adjacent link interference in the low lows clearance that is like line of sight clearance so these are the various interference that are caused and it will make the uh, transmission of microwave signal impossible and it will cause a interference or attenuation in the microwave transmission the next we will discuss about the microwave propagation so here uh, we, uh, in this diagram i have showed the transmitter and the receiver part and they are in the line of sight transmission so as the there is a rainfall or is a fog so it will attenuate the signal and this way so it means if the weather conditions are not good it will 
it will affect the transmission of the microwave signal it will attenuate the signals or it will cause the losses to the signal the next part we are going to discuss is the microwave transmission at low frequencies so if we are uh, causing a microwave transmission at a low frequencies then low frequencies transmission transmit up to distance 50 km it means 30 miles so here these waves can reflect off of the ionosphere and the surface multiple times so a system known as adaptive transmit power control atpc is used here at uh, at low frequency transmission so atpc is used to adjust power level of compensate for the link hindrance it means if there is attenuation from the weather conditions such as rain it will adjust itself according to that uh weather conditions by adjusting the power level the next part we are going to discuss about is the microwave transmission at the higher frequencies so at higher frequency that is greater than 11 gigahertz rain and other weather condition creates big problems such as scattering of the signals or the reflections of the signal so here the one method is we have to change the link length by using the atpc but the another method is the signal polarization that is the orientation of the signal wave relative to the ground either it is horizontal or the vertical the next part is the microwave transmission at the higher frequency so for the, if we are doing the horizontal polarization that will be adversely affected by the rainfall due to the shape of the falling raindrop here the raindrop can cause polarized rotation as they fall and it will skew a signal polarized out of uh, out of the alignment and potentially cause the interference with other polarized signal in the channel so it means horizontal polarization is not used widely to make the to down the polarization of a a microwave transmission then vertical polarization is likely affected it means lessly affected by the rainfall so it is better choice for the link planning the next part is the cross polar interference cancellers that is xpic so it is used with sample signals in both polarization to cancel any interference in the signal it means if we are using the horizontal polarization then we have to use the xpic with it to reduce the interference and in vertical polarization polarization for that also we have to use the xpic to reduce the interference so here the rain drops cause the main problems in for attenuating the microwave signals because it will rotate the polarization as they fall over the signal the next part is the adaptive modulation so here we have to use the adaptive modulation techniques to reduce the interference so it also reduce atmospheric attenuation by allowing the signals to increase and decrease the modulation to adapt to the changing environment condition it means adaptive modulation will increase or decrease according to the weather conditions so here the modulation compresses the data stream over the link and it reduce modulation to improve fidelity in poor condition. condition and it will increase it to maximize capacity in clear condition it means if there is a poor condition then it will reduce or compress the signals and if it will there is a uh, there is a clear uh, condition that is a weather is good then it will increase the uh, modulation to give the maximum capacity the next part is the multi hop topology so here the multi hop topology is the arrangement of link in a network here we know that the topology mainly is the arrangement of the network parts so the mesh and ring topology provide alternative path that helps to maintain the optimal connectivity so a storm effect if a storm affect the one link then the route can be passed to the another link in the topology formation so these are the various part that we can use at the higher frequency to reduce the attenuation of the signals the next part is the microwave transmissions at much higher frequency it means the much higher frequency that is at frequency of 60 gigahertz that is the millimeter waves so the here the fog become a threat factor in signal propagation so the effect to microwave link is that it will drop in the air temperature if it will cause any water vapor that is present in a air or transmission line and it will condense to form a liquid droplet it means if there is a drop in a air temperature temperature then the vapor 
if any water vapor is present in the transmission line it will condense to form a liquid droplet and this uh, liquid droplet would work as that of the raindrop so it will also attenuate the signals or it will cause to rotate the polarization of the signal so this is uh, the effect of microwave link if there is a drop in the temperature and solution for this is to we have to pressurize the waveguide with the pre uh, dry air or the nitrogen to keep um, keep the moisture out next part is the microwave antenna infrastructure so the effect of weather condition on hardware part of microwave antenna is also there so building up, up of snow and ice over the antenna structure account in the increased weight over the uh, tower so we have to also include these in the uh, hardware part uh, while planning for the hardware part of antenna so the solution to is we have to fit with a protective cover or the radomes over the antennas so for they can hold the snow that are falling over to the antenna so we will also have to install a ice shield that are used to prevent antenna damage from the ice so physical microwave infrastructure and its mechanical integrity will prevent the build up of snow and ice in front of the antenna while also reduce its wind load so red domes are the particularly useful for large long haul microwave antennas that are already have a heavy and prone to high wind loads so these are the part which you can add to the antennas to reduce as so to reduce the build up of snow and ice over to the antennas the next we are going to discuss about to cope with increasing demand of wireless technology there is a constant pressure on my microwave backhaul for increasing the capacity enhancing the reliability reliability means that we have to have the service all the time the low cap capital cost and we have less operating cost so these are the factor that are uh, that we can uh, include while installing a microwave transmission and in or uh, installing a microwave antenna infrastructure so the another part here is roi that is return on investment is a term that define the balance between cost and performance of antenna structure so this is all about the microwave propagation in microwave course thank you